this was a <coughs> back to national policy. Europe that we give between MMR or measles and so on, I think to one. And but here, for example, you're saying that four months of measles vaccination. No, the official WHO policy is nine months. Nine, okay, so why it is put forward at the age of four? Four months. I can't show it now, but <coughs> several things. Nine months wasn't the best policy in the first place. Nine months was decided at a desk in the WSO in 82. It isn't based on any study which said whether you compared mortality or vaccinated at seven months, eight months, or nine months. So it would probably have been better already at that time to vaccinate at seven months. We have done a lot of studies on that over the last 30 years, and measles vaccine given earlier have a, much more ben have a beneficial effect. But this is the center, and thirdly, there is the, the issue here is that we have, the mothers in Africa are not, now nearly all of them are immunized, which means that they have not had the natural infection. Therefore, they are only transmitting much lower level of maternal antibodies. So mothers would tend to lose antibodies around three months of age. So children are susceptible to measles vaccine already, uh, to measles and to measles vaccine already around three to four months of age. So it works, we have all, we've already shown that it works against measles as such. You can vaccinate at nine months effectively against me measles infection. The reason I did this study, and had not time to explain all the details, is that our data suggests that DTP is negative. What do we do about that? We try to reduce the time they have DTP at the last vaccine. And therefore, we move measles vaccine forward to reduce sort of the time where you have DTP as your last exposure. And if you remember the graph I showed you, the reduction in mortality between four months and nine months was 60%. So by giving measles rather than DTP, you reduced mortality with 60%. That's an enormous effect. But there was also an effect between nine months and three years of age. And I, I, I'd just like to emphasize here, the figure I showed you, a 50% reduction in mortality, it's, there's no other vaccine which has been tested for the effect on mortality of, of the traditional vaccines. The new vaccines, pneumococcal vaccines that everyone is sort of emphasizing, we need to get pneumococcal vaccines out there, it reduced mortality with 10 to 11 percent. We have the potential to do far more with the existing, if we can try to get a grip of what is immune stimulation, it's there, but no one is really looking at it. Is the main female difference is applicable to all communities or it's only a particular set of in Africa you're talking about? Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that would apply uh, everywhere. I've analyzed data from India where we can show the same thing. Um, we didn't hear that question. What? We, we did not hear that question. Uh, he, he asked whether it was applicable to other population where it only applied in Africa. And I said, I have analyzed data from, <coughs> from, from India where we can show the same kind of sort of sex <coughs> differentiation. And then you had a question on the last one up here. And then the, I have some comments before we go to break and work groups. So first. Um, yeah, in the beginning of your presentation, you said that, um, that the, the older population had remained in the capital or that parts of the, the older population had remained in the capital and didn't flee to, to Prabis or, or so. So I was wondering if you had considered differences in, in uh, population distribution between the local people and the people who were displaced and, and if so, if you've, if you've accounted that in, in the, the ratio between the two groups. Uh, sort of, I, I'm not quite sure I understand the whole question. I can try to answer then you will have to come back if I misunderstood you. Uh, in the survey we did, we knew where they were so, and we could follow them both in uh, those who remain, those the resident people, we could follow them uh, afterwards, even when the other population went back, we went out to the rural area and saw what happened to these children who were resident. Those people who, children who were from our study area, we could also follow them, we already knew them. So we had them both in the war situation and when they returned to the capital. So the mortality rates, ratios I gave you were adjusted for the population, with population work. What I cannot tell you is that there were some people who fled to the interior and there were people who stayed out in the province area. Uh, but, those, but the estimates I presented here 
is, is independent of that. But, so when you say resident, it's the people who, who remained in the capital. No, those who, who those who only fled sort of those who only fled 20 kilometers, they came quickly back. Those who have gone to the trouble of going further into the interior would be much more difficult to get back. But it's just that if like the older population was not displaced, then then you would have a change in in your population distribution, which might explain some some differences in mortality rates. Yeah, possibly. Initially, everyone was displaced. But then after the first war, a part of the population, I think of around 50% came back, whereas other people stayed out there. And for each of the subsequent small wars, some fled again, but the time to get back became, became shorter. So it took, it, it took a whole year before the whole population were back again in the south. Okay, and the last question? Okay, I have a small question. You said you did some experiments on the vaccines in mice. Could you repeat? Did you reproduce uh, the difference between male and female in mice models? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did not do those studies. I'm a social anthropologist. Uh, <coughs> but it's in the literature. You can find it if you look at, uh, I can find some reference for you if you're interested. Uh, I, I think you have to recognize that all lab work in mice is essentially done in female mice. Male mice are very complicated to hold, <laughs> to hold in the lab. Male mice is bad news. <laughs> pregnant, they fight. So they are much more difficult to manage. Which means that everything we know about the immune, immune system is the female mice rather than the male mice. There are virtually no studies where you have compared female and male mice. I've held several meetings for immunologists where they sort of stand up afterwards and say, I, I probably had to go back and get some mice of the other sex. <laughs> they all sort of tuned in to work with <coughs> the female mice. Thank you very much.